I have a challenge for you. When I was working on my private pilot certificate, I used Rod Machado's airspace triangle to help me remember the basic VFR weather minimums for each airspace category. I learned the tool from his private pilot handbook and used it again for my commercial pilot and a third time when working on my flight instructor certificate. What I like about the tool is that it provides a visual representation of the complicated information provided in 14 CFR 91.155. I still use the tool today, but over time I've enhanced it to make it easier to remember and include more of the regulations details. So let's walk through the tool and then we'll get to the challenge. <laughs> Start by drawing a large triangle, then divide it into two sections, top to bottom, by drawing a horizontal line across the middle. The top point of the triangle represents 18,000 feet MSL, and you might be wondering why we care about 18,000 feet MSL or flight level 180. Well, we care because there are no basic VFR minimums above this altitude. In fact, VFR flight is not allowed, so until we're instrument rated, we'll need to stay below flight level 180. The middle line represents 10,000 feet MSL and we'll label this now and explain why it's important in a little bit. The base of the triangle represents ground level. We'll identify this not only because we don't want to run into it accidentally, but because there are a couple of features we'll want to remember. Next divide the bottom half of the triangle into three smaller triangles, two pointing up and one pointing down. <laughs> in the far right triangle, draw a line dividing the triangle in half from top to bottom. This line represents 1,200 feet above ground level, and we'll label this too. <laughs> if you've used the airspace triangle before, you're probably thinking to yourself, I've seen all this before. But wait, we're getting to the good parts. Let's start filling in the spaces. Between 10,000 and 18,000 feet MSL is class Echo and Gulf airspace. So we'll start by putting an EG and an F-111 in the top small triangle. For those of you that are military buffs, you probably remember the General Dynamics F-111, or Aardvark. It was a supersonic, medium-range, multi-role combat aircraft. And I use this to remember two things. First, the visibility and cloud clearance requirements for Class Echo and Gulf above 10,000 feet are F for 5 statute miles, and we must stay 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one statute mile laterally from the clouds. Second, the reason the visibility and cloud clearances are bigger up here is because we may encounter very fast aircraft like, well, the aardvark. Now, on to the bottom half of the big triangle. <laughs> Moving left to right, we'll put a B in the leftmost triangle. In the middle triangle, we'll put C, D, E, G, and then in parentheses, night. In the far right triangle, we'll put G and day in parentheses. If it helps you to remember what to put where, please notice that these are in alphabetic order from left to right. Plus, the outside triangles only have one airspace in them. Going back to the leftmost triangle, we'll put a 3-COC, which reminds us that in Class Bravo airspace, the minimums are 3 statute miles visibility and to remain clear of clouds. In the middle triangle, we'll put 3-152, or 3 Cessna 152s. This reminds us that we need to be on the lookout for general aviation aircraft like, well, Cessna 152s. And the minimums are 3 statute miles visibility, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet laterally from the clouds. <laughs> the rightmost triangle is the busiest. Here we'll put 1-152 in the top half and 1-COC in the bottom half. The 1-152 reminds us that between 1,200 feet AGL and 10,000 feet MSL, the minimums are 1 statute mile, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet laterally. The 1-COC reminds us that in class Gulf airspace below 1,200 feet AGL, the clearances are 1 statute mile and remain clear of clouds. <laughs> Did you notice that everything within this triangle only needs 1 statute mile of visibility? Before we leave this space, there's one more thing we need to add. If you are flying at night in class golf airspace, in the pattern within one half mile from the runway, visibility and clearance at night are the same as they are during the day. To help me remember this, I add one more little triangle right here. <laughs> I color it black to represent night, and notice that I make it one half the height of the smaller triangle. That helps me remember that I need to be within one half mile of the runway. 
Finally, at the base of the large triangle, we'll put B, C, D, E, and then 3-1000. This reminds us that when Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo Airspace start at the surface, we'll need three statute miles visibility and 1,000 foot ceilings to be able to legally take off and fly VFR. <laughs> Whew, there you have it. An updated version of the airspace triangle. <laughs> now for the challenge. I dare you to sit down with a blank piece of paper and, from memory, draw the complete triangle and all the labels. <laughs> and if you can't, it's no big deal. Just review the video and try it again. In the comments section, could you please let me know three things? First, were you able to draw the triangle? Second, how many tries did it take you? And third, what was the most difficult feature to remember? <laughs> if this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Also, if you're looking for more information on airspace and flight planning, I'd recommend watching this video next. <laughs> and if you are looking for a great aviation learning and reference book, I've put a link to Rod Machado's private pilot handbook in the description below. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time. <laughs>